Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the brand new Adobe Photoshop Touch for phones. Now we've had of course Photoshop on the desktop for many years. We've had Photoshop Touch for tablets and now we have Photoshop Touch for smartphones. So um, if you're an Android user or an iPhone user you can now go to your respective app store and download the Photoshop Touch for your device. Today I'm running it on an iPhone 5 and let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Photoshop Touch uh, application and I'm going to change three settings, two of which you're probably going to want to look at. The third one's pretty much just for the um, presentation today. So let's go to the first one which is My Account. Under My Account you'll tap on that and actually sign in or create your Adobe ID. And what that will allow you to do is take advantage of the two gigabytes of storage that's included with your purchase of this app. This way you can move files back and forth between Photoshop Touch and perhaps the desktop and share them with others. So I'm already signed in with my account. I'm not going to go there. The second one is under general and that's the one again this is the one you don't need to worry about but I'm going to turn on presentation mode. That means that every time I tap on screen you'll see a little red dot to know where I've tapped so it's easier to follow along. And last but not least, the third one, image import. Now we default to 3 megapixels. Photoshop Touch supports up to 12 megapixels, but of course it's device independent. If your device is a newer smartphone, then chances are you can crank it up and not have a problem. But if it's an older smartphone with limited RAM, then you may not be able to work on files larger than say 3, 4, 5 megapixels and have lots of layers. So it's kind of a trade-off. But I'm going to go ahead and set mine to an 8 megapixel import because my phone has an 8 megapixel camera and that way when I bring in images I want them to be at least at the maximum resolution that they were captured at on the phone. So now we'll just tap done and then it takes me to this files and folders area which is really from my Creative Cloud storage. So if, I, if you have any projects that you've already worked on in, Creative, in the uh, Photoshop Touch stored in Creative Cloud you'll see them here and of course any folders. But since we're going to pretend you're just starting out, you probably don't have anything yet, we're going to go down to the second icon on the bottom and tap to create a new project from one of these four sources. So, from our photo library means the photos that are actually on the device. So if you, like in your camera roll or in your albums that you've already taken. Creative Cloud, of course, allows me to access my uh, two, or if I'm a Creative Cloud member, 20 gigs of storage and that will let me uh, access any images that I have there and start from. That's the one I'm actually going to use. Camera of course lets me take a picture right now with the camera and then edit it and then last but not least a blank document. So I'm going to go to Creative Cloud and it will um, access my Creative Cloud storage over the internet and I'm going to go ahead and go to my Photoshop Touch folder where I've got some images to begin. And I'm going to go ahead and start with this um, model image here. So I'll say add and that will now download it from the Creative Cloud from my 2 gigabytes of storage if I'm a Photoshop Touch user or my 20 gigs of storage or higher if I'm a Creative Cloud member. And then once it downloads the image it's now on my device and loaded into the app. Now on the smartphone version of Photoshop Touch you basically have your menus at the top, your tools at the bottom, your layers on the right hand side at the bottom. So we're going to do a quick composite here where we're going to composite three images. Uh, I need to of course create additional layers. So I'm going to go to the layers icon and in the layers icon at the very bottom there's a plus sign where I can add another layer. And again I can add another layer from the same way as we just talked about. I can add a photo layer, I can add an empty layer or a duplicate layer. I'm going to add a photo layer and again I get the same choices that we talked about earlier and this image that I'm going to add is also in the Creative Cloud. We'll grab this background image and add it in and that will download that and superimpose it right on top. Now there's a couple problems with this. First of all I want this image to be tall instead of wide and when Photoshop Touch brings in a new layer it kind of already brings it into what would be called free transform on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and move it around. I can rotate it. I can position it where I want. So we'll position it in the upper left corner and I can scale it. And it's scaling proportionally because I don't have to worry about holding down the shift key on my phone. 
So now we'll just tap the uh, the OK or check mark, and now that image is sitting on top of the model image. Of course, we want to see the model, so let's go back to our layers and just simply drag that layer down below the model layer. So now the model layer is on top, but once again, we can't see the trees or branches in the background because she's in front of it. Not only is she in front of it, but um, her background is completely covering it up. So what I really want to do is remove the background. So let's go back to her layer. And what I want to do, of course, is make a selection of just her and delete the background. This is one of the most commonly used things in Photoshop. People want to know how to do this all the time. And believe it or not, I'm going to attempt it on my phone. So the first thing is I go down to my tools and I've got all kinds of selection tools. I've got the uh, and, and um, editing tools. I've got the clone stamp. I've got paintbrush. I've got um, an effects brush. I've got a spray tool, an eraser. And I've also got selection tools like the magic wand a new um, brush selection tool, and a brand new touch aware scribble selection tool. So when I grab the scribble selection tool, I'm in, I have two modes, keep and remove. I'm going to go ahead and start with keep. And all I'm going to do is kind of scribble in the areas of the photo that I want to keep. So if you've used the uh, tablet version of Photoshop Touch, it's the same feature. Now I'm going to go to remove and Scribble in the areas that I don't want. I don't want the background. And then once I'm done, Photoshop Touch will update the selection based on my scribbling. And I may need to do some additional work, but it actually looks pretty good. You can barely see the marching ants here, but they are there around the image. And I need to do a little bit more removing down here. So let's go ahead and scribble that in. It will update the selection accordingly and maybe a little bit more here at the top but we've done it we've made our selection better just using or made a selection period using the scribble selection feature now of course um, she around or doing this around the um, outer area of her face and her clothes is no problem but when we get into this area around the hair a hard edge selection just won't work so we need to refine that selection using our Refine Edge technology. And believe it or not, uh, we even have Refine Edge built into the Photoshop Touch for phones. So I'll go to my first menu and uh, we'll just go ahead and say Refine Edge. And that will give us the Refine Edge um, brushing tool or, or add and subtract tool or add and clear tool. We'll go ahead and just uh, refine the edge just by brushing starting with the background and brushing into the hair around this image and that will refine the selection based on what we just painted so we'll again start with the background kind of paint into the hair here and it will refine that edge again and one more time just want to do it just right right up in there now again the marching ants really can't reflect a soft selection like that around hair but trust that it's been done so we'll go ahead and tap the uh, check mark to update the selection. And now that we've updated the selection, the last thing we need to do is go in and perform an extract, which is at the very bottom. So we'll do our, our extract and not bad. Did a really good job at the top here around the hair. Now the problem on the left hand side though is that she was against a wall that is gone now. So it kind of looks weird. Well, let's go ahead and do a deselect first. And then let's go ahead and pick her up and move her where we want her to be. So I'm going to go in, actually, let's go here. And we'll grab the transform tool and we'll just pick that layer up and we'll cheat. We'll just put it against the wall of the background. So now we'll tap OK. And that becomes our new image. So we get to see the uh, tree behind her. We get to see her on her new background. We get to see how good of a selection it did around the hair. Again, we're doing this on the phone and I'm pinching and zooming to zoom into it with my fingers. Now, I did um, cheat a little bit. I'm using a stylus. I'm using a Wacom stylus uh, specifically made for touch screens 
just as much as I would use a Wacom stylus on my Intuos 5 or my uh, Cintiq on my desktop. So you can do this with your finger, but it's much easier and much more precise using a stylus. All right, last but not least, we've got another layer to add into this. Let's go ahead and do our, another add layer. And we'll go ahead and add another photo layer from Creative Cloud. And this time we want to add in our client's logo, which is a ping file, by the way. So it supports transparency. And we'll go ahead and scale it down, rotate it, and move it in place. Tap OK. And that becomes our finished composite that we did on our smartphone. Now keep in mind, we could keep going. We could go select the uh, middle layer again. We could apply all kinds of adjustments to this. We can apply all kinds of special effects, basic ones, blurring, shadowing, uh, stylistic effects, artistic effects, photo effects. So we have all kinds of abilities in Photoshop Touch that I barely touched upon. I like to use that pun. All right, so we'll say done. We'll save this project that we just worked on, which will first save it back to my phone. And then you'll see a little progress bar in the upper left-hand corner as it's now saving it back up to Creative Cloud. And now that that save has taken place, the next thing I'll do is head over to my Creative Cloud folder on my desktop. And because I've got the uh, connect desktop connection going, it is now syncing that one file to my computer um, that I just uploaded from my phone or synced from my phone. And there it is. It's even giving me a little thing saying, hey, I've added a file to your folder. We'll double click on it and that will open it up in the desktop version of Photoshop complete with all the layers. So now I can refine it with my desktop tools, add more to it, and do things that Photoshop can do that Photoshop Touch can't do. So that's it for this quick demonstration on the new Photoshop Touch for smartphones and just how powerful it is having Photoshop, Photoshop Touch on your handheld or smartphone device. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White and we'll catch you next time.